Is liberty dying where you live? Escape to Keen at freekeen.com. Good morning, everybody. It's our smallest crowd of uh, all of the three mornings uh, thus far, and I have a feeling that has to do with the fact that uh, about mm, a good chunk of the convention were at the karaoke uh, party last night and the bowling, um, and it was a lot of fun, and some people are apparently still awake. That's right, those uh, from, from went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still awake two days ago, no excuses. So... Um, hopefully some more people will be filtering in, but of course, uh, for those of you who uh, aren't here, hopefully you'll get to watch this at home, because I think this is an important panel, uh, and Johnny Ray uh, is going to be presenting this panel. I'm going to introduce him, and then he'll tell you about the, uh, the our wonderful lady, all lady panelists here this morning. Uh, these ladies are going to give you some perspective, uh, because they've all been here for a long time, and uh, that's the idea of this next panel. It's old school... New Hampshire. And originally this was going to be two panels. Uh, we were going to have old school movers, people from the you know, Free State Project participants who had moved to New Hampshire, just a panel of those people who'd been here a long time, and then also a New Hampshire Natives panel. We ended up deciding to combine the two. And uh, so you'll, you have uh, three natives on the panel and one old school mover, and Johnny Ray is also an old school mover. So hopefully these folks will give you some perspective on you know, what's it been like uh, looking back over the last decade, basically, of the Free State Project being here in New Hampshire? What's changed? What, uh, what were things like back then? How, how have things evolved, hopefully, uh, since, uh, since that time? And whatever other questions, obviously, you guys have about, uh, you know, for people who've been here for a while and who've been, uh, who've been observing and may have very, very interesting insights to give us. So, good morning, uh, wake up, and it's, uh, it's great. I'm gra grateful that you guys came out uh, today, and hopefully we're gonna have a great final day here at Keen Bench, of course, there's a lot going on, and we'll talk more about some of the other stuff, the activities and such that'll be happening later. Uh, Johnny Ray is a, a friend of mine, and thank you, Johnny Ray, for coming here and being on uh, today. And he's also one of the, uh, the hosts of Free Talk Live. So if you listen to Free Talk Live, you've heard Johnny Ray on Tuesday nights. He's a very talented and uh, funny individual. So uh, welcome and good morning. Here is the old school New Hampshire panel. Thank you, Ian. Thank you all for coming to the first panel of the morning. It is, uh, it's 9 a.m. That's normal for, most, for a lot of people to be up. Not for me. I usually kick it in bed till about noon, especially on Sunday. Um, thank you for coming to this panel, and thank you so much for coming to Keene. We, um, we love having you here, and you're very welcome to be here. I'm going to introduce myself first, and then I'll introduce uh, some of these people, not all of them. Some of them will be introducing themselves. I am from North Carolina. I learned about the Free State Project from a Libertarian Party newsletter. I was, uh, had joined the Libertarian Party. Um, in, the, uh, in the late 90s. And I read about the Free State Project and I signed up for it. It seemed like the only way. And then I forgot about it. And some years went by. And I was looking for podcasts to listen to w at work. And I found Dan Carlin's podcast. Dan Carlin does a podcast about history. He does another one about current events. But he was asking me to vote on an online um, uh, podcast alley, something or other, for his show. And I went there and I found another show there called Free Talk Live that was number one in the political category. And I checked it out, I listened to it, and I was blown away because I never thought that I would hear what I was hearing on that show on the radio. And, and then, you know, to my surprise, one of their sponsors was the Free State Project. And uh, again, blown away again. So just some months went by. Uh, Ron Paul was making a bid for the, uh, for the, for the candidacy for the Republican Party. And he was, in, uh, he was in New Hampshire. And I was you know, listening to Free Talk Live every night. They talked a lot about Ron Paul. I expected him to do very well. He got about 8% in the primary. And I thought, well, I've got, I've got to go up there. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing my thing here in Asheville, but, but, but what am I doing? I've got a purpose in life, and, and I think this is it. This is what sets, this, I feel like this is what sets me apart from just about everybody else I know around here, 
And if I want to further my own self in this world, then, then I think I got to go up there and, and meet all those people and, and do something with them. I don't know what. So I came up and I just started out. Um, at the time, there was, uh, there was some flag burnings going on. Jesse was, Je Anarcho Jesse was this guy who just came into town. He was a sort of, he was a big thing in Keene. And, um, and, and years went by. Gold and silver, of course, were very big then. And now, Bitcoin has, has eclipsed that in my mind, and I think for a lot of others. As I was thinking about what has really changed in the liberty movement abroad and in Keene, Bitcoin is the thing that has really stood out in my mind. I think it's going to change the world. I think it was kind of like the evolution of liberty in America was, was the internet and the free state project. And I think Bitcoin is, is the, strongest, the strongest factor right now for change. I'm, I'm very excited about that. So time went by. I've never been the most, I'm probably one of the least active activists around here. I don't think I'm a natural choice to run uh, this panel or to do what I do every Tuesday night, which is I host, I co-host Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. And it amazes me that, that I went there, that I came from Asheville, just wanting to come up and see what I could do. And, um, and, and I've come up and, and I built a life here in Keene and I get to work with Ian on a weekly basis. It's very exciting. So that's, that's, that's me. Uh, directly to my left here is Nemi. Nemi is a, she's, she's a, a wonderful woman and she is the one that I will not be introducing. Nemi gets to introduce herself. She's kind of a mystery to many. Because I didn't submit my bio in time. <laughs> <clears throat> Next to Nemi is Shauna. Shauna learned of the Free State Project in 2003. She completed degrees in history and linguistics in California and moved here in 2009. She's a collational engineer for a great company in downtown Keene. She's a fantastic cook and she's, uh, she's about hip deep in homemade natural products. She's a big fan of your coconut uh, derived things and peppermint and all that. Kate, Kate uh, is the... Um, uh, she grew up in Keene. She edits copblock.org. She manages the online store and writes the script for the police accountability report. Fantastic work, Kate. Lori, Lori Rodier, I met in, I don't know, 2010, something like that. Lori is my employer. She and I work together keeping the Monadnock region clean. We don't just, not just Monadnock, Tri-State. Pardon me, the tri-state area. That's Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Lori is a, uh, she's a machine. She, she doesn't stop. Um, and uh, Lori prepared a fantastic bio. Lori's the one, she's going to go a mile a minute. I w anticipate having to put the brakes on her. I practice stopping a lot, you know. I'm French. You have to... Fantastic. Lori, thank you. Thank you all for being a part of this panel. Uh, I really appreciate it. Now, the panel, I guess the last thing that I want to say about it, the, it could go two ways, as I was thinking about my introductory remarks. On the one hand, I think of myself as, as a real slacker, so this is just kind of a toss-off, just a, a nice thing to, to a nice, easy, lighthearted thing to get going at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. But on the other hand, I think this panel has the potential to be incredibly helpful, very illuminating, because the people on this panel, they were here before this, this Free Keen and the Free State Project, they were here before all that happened. So they know what it was like before, they've seen it, as it's progressed through the years, and they have a much better perspective on what actually the Free Keen people have, have accomplished here. Having said that, my first question for the panel is, how has Keen changed since you've been, since you've been paying attention to it? This is uh, for me first. Would you, you like me to introduce myself as well now? Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. 
Um, you might have to remind me of the question because I'm only through one of my three cups of coffee for this first hour. Um, my name is Nemi Jones. I've been in Keene 20 years. I came out of the hatch in Manchester, New Hampshire uh, in the mid 70s. Uh, only child of a highly ranked military intelligence family. Um, I think I'm genetically a rebel. Um, I was ended up being in foster care when I was a teenager. Well, I've actually started when I was 11, so most of my um, older uh, teenage years, I was in foster care in New Hampshire. I went to college, I was on the radio, I ran a pot smoking fraternity with graffiti on the walls, and then I moved to Keene 20 years ago. And I've spent the last 20 years um, living and working in Keene and having a family and whatnot. Um, and I became involved with the Free State Project when a coworker of mine in Yankee Publishing. So you look like a liberty-minded individual. I'm like, what is a liberty-minded individual? I just like guns, whatever. Um, and he would start um, slipping Liberty Forum stuff on my desk as he would go by. And then I looked at Free Keen. I was like, oh, Free Keen. Oh, they're rebels like me. They like getting into trouble, like me. And um, so I went and I checked it out and I actually didn't like it when I first went. And I, that kind of ties into Johnny Ray's first question. Um, so I went to the Manchester, Manad, I did not, the, what is it, the Merrimack Valley Porcupines over there. Um, and became involved in Manchester and Concord and the Politico aspect of things for a few years and then I came back to Keene. And while Ian was in jail for some civil disobedience that he had engaged in, I was um, put in touch with Mark Edge, who is apparently looking for uh, co-hosts. And uh, I met him for coffee uh, on Main Street in Keene and we had a nice little chat. He said, well, it's been nice meeting you but I'm not really looking for a co-host. And I said, well, that's great because I'm not really looking for a job. So what are you doing next week? Uh, went the next week, we, we hit it off pretty well, and uh, when Ian got out of jail, I figured I would just go on my merry way back to my life as a, a keen local, and they, uh, they kept me, and that was uh, two years ago, I'm now in my third year of hosting co-hosting the Wednesday night show at Free Talk Live. Uh, so that's my introduction there. Um, I think I was really born to be a keeniac. I don't, I, I kind of hate to say it, <laughs> but I think I was, because um, I was always kind of... Uh, challenging to authority. But on the flip side, to get back to Johnny Ray's question is, um, hey, you want to repeat the question for me? Sure, basically, I didn't, I didn't give a specific question, just kind of announce the general theme. What I think uh, we can do to, for these people is tell them how Keen has changed. Uh, the, the other night you were telling me about how you were walking with your grandmother. That's really, it's not my grandma. Um, that's one of my favorite stories about Free Keen, actually. Uh, this was several years ago. It was um, during the famous boob painting incident on Central Square. If any, is anyone not familiar with the famous boob painting incident on Central Square? Okay. Um, there's a, a, a town green in downtown Keene. It's called Central Square. Um, and uh, there was a, a few people quick gathered down there. Uh, and a woman had taken her shirt off and had another person painting her breasts. This is one of the old saws you hear from locals who complain about Free Keen. It's like, oh, they just like paint tits on the square. That's all they're for. An open container and drinking games at city council meetings, and they're just not going to, they're causing nothing but trouble. Well, as it happened, when this was happening, I was walking downtown to have um, lunch at a, a decent restaurant downtown with a Catholic grandmother, a friend of mine who has 17 grandkids, right? And me, I'm an atheist, I'm a rebel. How we're friends, I don't even really know, but we are, and she's a great lady. And so I see what's going on. And my first instinct was to protect her. I don't know why, I still haven't figured that out, but she said to me, she says, Nemi, I've seen lots of boobs in my life. I'm not gonna be offended. So we got to talking, and my understanding of uh, that time was uh, drinking games, um, Wears uh, brown bottles filled with water in front of city council where people were arrested. Um, and ultimately, it was the open container where you were arrested, Ian, right? You were not arrested for the, the boob painting on the square. Uh, that was an open container. Right, okay. Yeah, and I was cited for an open container. Okay, so there was also, there was also uh, activism going on on that front as well. So I got to talking with my friend. And they were just having a nice, nice time. Out on the square, it was a nice sunny day, and this woman was having her body augmented by a, a very talented artist. Um, but it, it, what has Freakeen done? 
I think um, they get- yeah when you talk to when you talk to the people that you know another great benefit of the people on this panel uh, most of them Shauna and I kind of accepted is that they have friends and family from every of every stripe you know me the majority of the people that I know around here and that I see and talk to are libertarians and that's very different for Nemi and Kate and Lori so at, through the years just just Nemi when you talk to when you talk to your friends um, what do they what do they what do they like and what do they not like about what we're doing in their town they ask me what my anarchist friends are up to yeah good so they're curious yeah they are curious uh, they're skeptical um, and and that has eased with time as the activism has changed uh, this is definitely more pointed when um, the I don't want to call it pointless activism, but the more frustrating activism to the locals that they didn't understand, the, um, the painting the breasts on the square, the open container stuff. They said, what, how is this increasing my freedom? Right. You know, sometimes, um, uh, to, to interrupt you, um, a lot of the things that I have participated in, in Keene, I didn't, I didn't find much point in. But when it comes to the commons, I'm so opposed to public property of any kind that when it comes to the commons I'm happy to have people doing offensive things out there if it's bad for the commons that's you know I don't mind that so much the and answer I is guess privatize the commons and that, it, it started the conversation which I think is, is really the, the catalyst that Keene has brought to Keene or Free Keene has brought to Keene is it starts a conversation like it did with my, my Catholic grandmother friend and, and I. We had a, a great conversation that afternoon over lunch about uh, public nudity. And in New Hampshire, breasts are not considered genitalia. Also at the same time, there was, uh, around the same time, there was a uh, young woman who open carried a firearm topless in Keene and was arrested. Um, and that really got my attention because I'm very pro-gun. Um, uh, not so much pro-nudity especially in public, but hey, to each their own, that's cool. Um, I thought that really took some, some spine and some courage to stand up to a cop and, uh, well, not wearing a shirt. I thought that, <laughs> thought that was great. Um, so it started a conversation. And granted, on the other side of the fence, um, the conversation is kind of heated sometimes. I don't understand, like I worked at a, a place that is just across the street from a courthouse. Um, and Ian and Ademo and Pete were doing some videotaping and my coworkers were caught in the kind of the crossfire. Um, they were, th my friends were going, uh, trying to ambush interview court employees, um, but the, my, my coworkers would also park in the same parking lot. So Ian and Pete and Ademo didn't necessarily know who worked in the courthouse and who worked in the, in the building I worked in. So they would, they would kind of try to ambush interview people and that really um, didn't go over well at the paper stacking plant. Um, so what has Free Keen done? I keep coming back to that because you told me that first thing this morning. It was going to be my first question. Well, why don't you think about it for a little while? I, I already have, and that's why I keep coming back to it. Okay, as all I, right. Free Keen has um, started the conversation. It's, um, it has divided the community. Um, th my experience with my, my local friends, um, they're, they're either raving and, and psyched about what Free Keen has done, and this is certainly more recently. The Robin Hood activism has, has done wonders. Um, it seems to be a productive, in the, the people I know, it's a much more productive, effective form of activism. Um, and I'm sorry, any opportunity I have to take the flowers to City Hall to thank the city attorney for turning my city into a national, international laughing stock is, that made my day. Um, yeah, oh, it, too. yeah. That was it was fantastic. Thing. You can't pay for that kind of kind of um, advertising publicity. Speaking of Robin Hooding, I was looking at Free Keen last night uh, in the wee hours of the morning, and I went back to 2008, late 2008 when I got here in 2009, and I was reading some of the archives, and I saw Lauren Canario and Jim Johnson put a video up about their own Robin Hooding, and it was a wonderful feeling to see that. The video that they put up, the person that they had saved had put a note on a forum, you know, like the Free Keen forum or something, thanking them. 
And it was just exciting to, to see so many years ago the beginning of Robin Hooding in Keene. Also, I'd like to take this moment to just uh, tip my cap to everybody who is a lot more old school than me. And I've got a, a, a very incomplete list here. Um, uh, number one, Ian, of course. Ian came here a little bit before me. And Lauren and Jim were the inspiration for Ian. Lauren, Jim, and uh, 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 Russell and Kat Canning were big inspirations for Ian to get here. And then I got here. And um, so, so those, those three, four, five people, I wanted to uh, tip my cap to them. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, Lori, could you tell us uh, a little bit about your experience with the Free Keen people and how you first came into contact with them and tell us about yourself, of course, too. Uh, my name is Lori Rodier and uh, I was born and raised in New Hampshire. And I first heard about the Free State Project uh, because I lived in Keene. And uh, it was Rich Paul had just started with uh, some others, but he was the most... Uh, one that I could recognize who was at the forefront and started the 420 rally downtown in Keene and uh, I thought to myself what a bunch of fucking idiots <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ they're out there pardon my French <laughs> they're out there they're gonna get arrested uh, you're on YouTube now is that what you wanted you're on YouTube now you're on YouTube people are seeing you get high blah 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 I don't know why you're doing this. And, uh, but I didn't say that because, of course, I didn't know who he was or where to find him. And I certainly wasn't going to go to that 420 rally that was going on down there because I wasn't going to be on YouTube. And uh, a, f a couple of weeks after that, it ended the, the big hoopla of it. And people were still hanging out down there and smoking pot. And nobody was b bothering him anymore. But uh, it wasn't as big. Uh, I went out for a drink for my birthday. And I stumbled across Rich Paul. And I was a little more sprite than normal. And I said, uh, you're Rich Paul. And he's like, yes, I am. And I'm like, well, you're an idiot. And this is why. And blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well. And he sat down and explained to me why he was doing what he was doing. And he had me watch the philosophy of liberty and the tiny dot. And uh, he, he, he definitely perked my ears up. But I still didn't get it. I grasped it. I was in the circle. But... Uh, I was like, yay, I'm still on the hamster wheel, but I didn't quite get it. And uh, a couple, but I was interested. I'm like starting to stalk you guys on Facebook. I'm like, ooh, that's, ooh, you know, follow, 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 follow. And uh, one day I went over to the CAC and it was Ian, Meg, Ademo, Pete, I don't know, were you there? Uh, Puke was there, I Sure, think. James Puke Schmill. Yep, JJ, of course. And uh, by the end of that night, I have taken the red pill, and there was no going back. You know, it was like a, a tag team event that totally worked. And uh, I was really into it and involved, and, you know, I went through uh, unschooling right away so I could, like, try to have my children be as free as possible right away. And I, like, uh, had a few brush, realized that uh, I'm a single mom with three kids. My husband passed away, and... Uh, um, uh, you know, I can't get arrested, is what it is. I don't have any other family to raise them, so I was, you know, once the law and the state started pushing around, uh, I said, well, this can't work. And so I, uh, I went and, and tried to do what I'm doing now, which is just work as much as I possibly can to, uh, to make something different. But what I have seen change in Keene is uh, there is more liberty here. You know, I, you know, I guess if you're coming from outside, you don't you know, see it as much. But say if you had been here 10 years ago and we were like younger teenagers running around, we couldn't, if you walk three deep, you know, you were, you were like a, a gang and, you know, they was broke, break it up. And, you know, uh, we could probably all leave here today at 420 and go downtown. Well, I hear that the police are on heightened alert because there's so much of us here. Uh, but uh, we could go there and get high right now. And at night, we could go down there and have a drink, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's essentially, you know, it's a police-free zone now, I think. Uh, you know, so I, I think that, and the other thing I want to say, and I think it answers your number one and number three question, what I think is, is different is Keene is kind of like the harbinger for activism, I think. You, you see these guys come in like Ian and, and um, Russell, 
and you know these people that just do these epic things that attract other epic people and then it's just this you know since i've been here you know a lot of these you know these big attention getters derek and and you know pete and the demo there you know a lot of stuff has happened here that i feel like that is contagious so i feel like you know keenan's kind of like the harbinger for uh getting arrested activism i don't want to say that civil disobedience crazy stuff that brings you out of the closet thank you laurie kate how do you feel that Keen has changed through the years, and how did you first become aware of the uh, the, the free Keen types and the freedom freaks downtown Keen? Well, when I was uh, 15 or 16, I had a few friends say like, "Oh, there's a bunch of people smoking pot in Central Square. Let's go check it out." And I said no like two days in a row, and then the third day, my curiosity got the best of me, and decided I'd go check it out and I learned that there was more behind it than just smoking in Central Square that there was actually a philosophy behind it and it immediately like I understood it and it was like somebody else felt the same way that I did I just couldn't put it into words before um, and I think that it's changed like a lot of people rather than just saying like oh I don't like what this government employee did and just leaving it at that a lot of people have started thinking more and actually considering alternatives and um, there's also a lot of people that have started using alternative currencies and I think that it's just the ideas are spreading and a lot of people are becoming interested and getting involved, you know, such as myself or a number of other people. Do you get the feeling that more people in Keene are, um, well, like Nemi said, all the, 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 the smart things we do and all the stupid things we do, they start a conversation. So do you think Keene is, is different because of that, because there's people in the news and the people here are exposed to this this kind of thing? I absolutely think it's different because of it. I think it's getting a lot more people thinking. I think that, um, you know, it's just like, it starts a lot of conversations and I don't know. I really love that uh, everybody decided to come here. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you there. One conflict that I have in my own mind is that I wonder if the whole liberty movement and the movement in America towards liberty is a deterministic thing. Was going to happen anyway because that's the way the world has been going despite you know some some unsettling things that we see the world has been going towards more and more individual liberty since the beginning. So why should anyone move from where they live and uproot themselves which, which can be very chaotic, and move to another part of the country. And for me, first of all, I hold out hope that it's not purely deterministic and that we are really, really changing the world here. But even if we're not, then just being here with people who have some brains is, is huge. And that's what I love about being here. Shauna. Shauna, you're like me in a lot of ways. And one thing we share that's separate from the rest of these people here is that we're not from New Hampshire. You're from California. Do you have any special insight? Do you have any, have, has anything jumped out at you as you've thought about this uh, panel discussion about how Keen might have changed because or despite of the free Keen type people here in town? Well, I think. My first thought at thinking of that question is that it's matured, but yeah, I agree. I kind of don't. I, I think it's a little bit more than that. It, it has matured. There are people who've lived here, you know, for several years, and they've become more established. They've gotten, you know, a better, more stable job or whatever, and they're sliding in and doing their own thing. Um, but also, there have been, you know, people who've moved here recently who aren't here to just slide in, get attention, get on YouTube, as, you know, Lori was getting the lorries shaken out of the tree. Um, <laughs> but who are also here to to live, and that's why I, 
that's why I moved here was to live, not to do activism or you know break liberty out of out of its own tree or anything. And I think that's been a really good development that there are more people who aren't moving here. And not, not to say that people who come here to do activism or who end up doing something that garners a lot of attention, you know, that that's like the wrong way to do it or anything. It's not, you know, for me or anybody else to be like, you should straighten up and fly right and apply at JCPenney or something. But um, that's a huge change that I've seen. There's more stable, long-term goal-oriented, you know, settlers yeah it's like it's like an accretion a slow accretion of of steady people some people come and they just like you say they make a splash and they turn around and they go or they make enemies and then some people come in and they start building they start living and they start living like real people like people that (laughs) the natives here (laughs) can can um um identify with sean i interrupted you I got lost. What? Um, <laughs> you were talking about maturity. Uh, yeah, ironically, I was talking about maturity. <laughs> and that just seems like the biggest change that I've seen is that the type of people. And I think that's also because of the people who have stayed and who have seen it over and over, seen somebody say, like, as soon as I get this starter coil on my car fixed, I'm sliding up there to Keene for liberty and, you know, set everything on fire. There has been more people on, you know, like the Shire Society forums and on Facebook threads, wherever, where people are saying, don't, (laughs) don't move here if you're just here to, you know, breathe liberty or something. Move here when you have, you know, you've accumulated enough savings, you've, you know, wrapped up your whatever emotional family ties you have that you got to settle, you know, and set up a place to to live because if you know moving is a really stressful thing whether it's from you know I guess Brattleboro or something or from California and if you're not moving here as if you were moving here for yourself and not for liberty then it can be a really fun crash sure Lori yes sir yesterday yes nope two days ago you were chewing my ear off about advice for free staters, and it revolved around a lot about being able to um, that the um, the the locals not being receptive and naturally receptive to the ideas of liberty because you know they're right, so everybody should be receptive to them. But they don't. Correct. They don't. They're not getting. You're talking to people, and they're they don't know what you're talking about. Right. They don't know. They don't know what you're talking about, and they don't know where to go to meet these people. Exactly. And, and you wanted to tell us all about that. I disagree with you vehemently. I think you're, 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 uh, you're all wet. But please continue. Uh, I am your boss. Remember that. I make you crawl in a hole. Um, all right. That being said, uh, I'll say this. When, when you know, I said that law got involved in my life in the state for not uh, schooling my children the proper way, I moved into uh, the woods and uh, I went to work, and I wanted to have freedom through work. That I said, I'm going to get a big parcel of land, and we're going to have a community, and wind, and gardens, and pigs, and chickens, and, and uh, I'm going to do that. And I, I focused on that. But I'm still liberty-minded. I wasn't being, you know, like I said, well, I, I can't do that, but I'll try to do this. And... Uh, and doing that, you talk to a lot of people because, you know, I'm, now I'm just pretty much strictly following you guys on Facebook and whatever channel that I could. I'm not really hanging out with the collective mind every day, but I'm trying to, like, hey, this is who I am. This is why I'm doing this, you know. And uh, a lot, you know, and plus I'm from here. So real, realistically, every from, in my opinion, everybody from New Hampshire, just about, I'll say at least 50% of us are like-minded. We just don't know it. You know, we want to have a fire in our backyard as big as our house. I'm going to put a shed up and fuck you. I'm not getting permission. And if you come here, I'm going to shoot you. You know, that, 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 you know, and some of them have a little bit more redneck about it and some of them a little less. If I may, I think it's really a philosophy of do unto your neighbor as you would have them do unto you and leave them the hell alone. Yep. If your house is on fire, I'll be the first one there with hose, but I don't want to, you know, borrow a cup of sugar. You know, I don't want to know about every little thing. 
But uh, so in talking to these people every day about myself, I, I you know, uh, I don't necessarily jump right out and be like, free state project or blah, blah, blah. But I just talk about liberty and, and whatnot. And uh, when we do get to the point about free staters and the free state project, there it's, it's like uh, I, they don't know how to get here. You know, they don't know who they are and what is this free state project. You know, I actually had to print the original report offline that I found and give it to my dad. So he'd be like, here, this is what happened. Some kid wrote this and then put it online. A bunch of people voted. They wanted to have a free state and they picked New Hampshire and they're here for freedom. And he was like, oh, and then he read it and, you know, and that, you know, he had his little <laughs> aha moment. But I think realistically, and we're probably to fault for that as well, I think, but, uh, it's an untapped resource, and and I don't want to say this in a rude way. So if I am, you can smack me around later. But uh, when when I started like doing the I'm going to have a community thing, and I don't want to say prepping because it sounds kind of not me, but you know. Yeah, elaborate on that for a minute because you haven't really told us about that. You have got some land and yep. and some some gear, and you want to put together a community out in the woods. Yes, because. Uh, you know, I obviously can't do a high number thing, but at least the people that are in my circle and the people that work with me, uh, I bought that so we could all live there together and they will get their deeded piece and we all have our deeded pieces and we'll build it together and wind turbine, pigs, chickens, and that's us not renting. One chunk of tax, nobody's going to Walmart, nobody's going to PSNH. and h uh, And realistically, let's just say if you got half of New Hampshire or a third, just a third of people in New Hampshire to listen, would it really matter who moved here? Because, you know, you would already have the numbers here. The numbers are here. You know, and I heard James talking the other day about, you know, oh, well, it's, it's, you do kind of get nervous when you're out there Robin Hooding and talking to people. But it's, it's probably just as nerve-wracking to, to talk to locals. But, you know, if, if I don't want to say door-to-door -door action because that's probably a little thing. But, you know, to handing out some... some uh, information about you can't find out that social sundays is at McHugh's unless you're on the internet in this circle and you know about where to find that information you know and realistically i call the computer that fancy little tv that my office manager jackie can do some stuff on so that doesn't that would never apply to me so and a lot of other people like you know so i think that uh it's an untapped resource that uh not untapped because i i do see everybody out there doing everything they can to connect with people in different ways but but uh some people i'm not saying that we're not as intelligent as everybody here but they've been tr programmed for a very long time and and sometimes you just have to find that you know they just need a little hand holding and you have to put it in redneck terms so everybody, you know they all are on the same page you know but i think it's an untapped thing so as far as I know, Lori, the Free State Project, Free Keen, does not have, doesn't do any, any advertising on like the local radio station or local television. I could be wrong about that, but is that kind of something that you're talking about? Do you think that that, that would be better than what's happening? Uh, well, I think that, you know, that let's say that the groups that are going out like Robin Hooding and uh, Don't Take the Plea Deal, uh, Jury Nullification, uh, they put a lot of time and effort into dedicating to that. And I think, you know, maybe uh, if we went down to like, and I don't want to just say the college because realistically, I, there's plenty of husbands and wives and family members and, and older people too that think the same way. They just don't get it. They were like me with Rich Paul. This fucking idiot getting arrested, blah, blah, blah. Why, what do you mean? Who paved the roads, blah, blah, blah. So they just need that, that you know, play. They, that's the biggest thing that people ask me. You know, people that are working for me, other businesses, where do we go to find these guys? I, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I don't want to know about it. And, you know, I think maybe more public, maybe, I don't know how you'd go about that part, handouts and uh, maybe some, you know, open lists you know and a, the Keene State has a bulletin board and downtown has a you know there's a different bulletin boards where you could pr post where you know you come meet your local at come to social Sundays right these are our open events in Laconia and these are our open events in Manchester and these are our open events in Keene you know and this is how you can come meet us you know thank you Lori Shauna I'm here how is Keen 
And the, the sentiment here, the, the, the free keen inspired sentiment, the liberty sentiment, how is it here compared to say Riverside, the, the Riverside, California that you remember? It exists. It exists. <laughs> um, Riverside in Southern California after years of living out here is, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that, you know, borders aren't real and all that, but it is a completely different country. Um, I had, I happened to find a roommate my last two years in school who was a graduate student who knew all about Mises and the, you know, that Austrian school of economics, but there, you know, there, they never translated any conversation. There was the, that small county's like libertarian party. And, you know, one of my best friends was, is involved in libertarian politics. Um, and I still follow California nonsense. Um, and it seems, um, it's speaking a different language. <laughs> I mean, out here people are like, well, you know, how is this going to result in anything for me and not really, and that could be because it's in Keene and the political stuff is in out there, Nashua, right. Manch or something, Concord. Um, South Central. It, yeah. South Central New Hampshire. <laughs> um, and, and the focus in Riverside when I, or in California when I spoke to anybody about politics or liberty was about like, was more about national stuff. There was more awareness of what the news product of the day was getting forced down our brains. Um, but out here people seem to be more aware of like the local stuff of what's going on around, around town. Sure, sure. And a difference, this is more of a, a New Hampshire thing than necessarily a Keene thing, but something that I noticed moving here from North Carolina is the police presence in this state is much, much, much lighter than where I was from. And I remember flying home once and stopping at the Philadelphia airport. That was insane. There were guys with uh, submachine guns slung, slung over their shoulders everywhere in that place. So that's, that's one of the things I love about New Hampshire is it's, it's just, it's more like things should be with people relating to each other. You see people who run businesses out of their homes, which, which wasn't the same in North Carolina. I know it happened, but around here it really jumped out at me. I saw it everywhere, people living above their stores. So that's just an aside. Oh, by the way, as another aside, Shauna was a babysitter. She babysat for the, uh, the ladies in Keene for a few months, co-hosting with them. <laughs> And that was a very that was an important part of her bio that I didn't uh, that I wanted to make sure I got to you people. Um, I didn't do that in Riverside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, media media is big in uh, around here. You know, kind of in large measure due to Ian and the the progenitors. He's a media guy, so 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 a lot of people came and and I I did a little bit of acting. I did some voice work actually before I came up here, but I wasn't in media, and and now now I am. But moving on, Nemi, go ahead. Okay, um, there's uh, maturity was mentioned. Um, I'd like to speak to that a little bit. Um, one of the most uh, evocative experiences I had was watching Pete Ayer be put on the ground in Keene District Court and have Jim Cimarellis, who's a member of the Keene Police Department, physically put his knee on Pete's head. And Pete retained the presence of mind to speak calmly to this man who had his knee on his head for the massive crime of wearing a hat in a courtroom. P refused to re remove his hat on a January day, Keene District Court, and was hauled out in cuffs for it. Um, and later that day, a member of the Keene Police Department returned to the same courtroom in almost an identical hat and amazingly enough, was not tackled, handcuffed, and had a knee in the head. Um, but the maturity of the police department has definitely shifted. And one of the most powerful things that I ever learned from Pete Ayer was he later went back to Jim Semorales and had a conversation with him about what had happened. And I am just so awed by that sort of presence in the moment even just sitting here in front of you folks, I have nothing to lose, and I'm, my hands are a little twitchy. I don't really to present very well, necessarily. Um, but Pete, if you, you can go find the video on Google, 
he just speaks so calmly to this man with this knee on his head on the floor. He's just like, you don't have to do this, man. You don't have to do this. But the police presence here, I didn't mention that and how Keene has changed. When I first got here, we had a lot of cops that were good cops. And I know we all hate cops, right? But when I say good cop, it's not a cop that feels duty bound to ruin your life. If he comes across a teenager who has paraphernalia and some marijuana, he's just going, hey, you know what? I see something going on over here. I'm going to write this something down over here. And when I turn back around, we can come back to this conversation. Oh, wait, you don't have that paraphernalia in your hand anymore? Oh, well, then have a good day. The Keene police force at this point, and this actually coincides with, but I don't think is caused by Free Keene or the Free, Free State Project's arrival, the Keene Police Department has really evolved into a military-style police presence in Keene. Oh, no. Where uh, 20 years ago when I first arrived here, if I was pulled over, I might be pulled over by one cruiser with one cop. Uh, two weeks ago, I was pulled over. I had four cops, three cruisers, for the high crime of running a stop sign. Now, those of you who know me know that my license may be in question. My registration or inspection may be in question. I was completely legal, and I had four cops and three cruisers, and I did nothing. What did I do? I, I, I California stopped at a, at a traffic stop. Are you kidding me? It just is such a night and day presence here, and I don't know if that's a response to terrorism or what, but I thought that was a thing to add. Thank Can, you, Nami. I'd like to add something to that if I could. Please uh, do. Uh, what I have also noticed with the police force is, and I, I have to say this, I haven't been pulled over in Keene, although I've had a few bad encounters in court. Uh, it's the local police, I'll say even as far as western Massachusetts now, to Vermont, the, the whole surrounding areas, you know, even if my ghetto piece of crap straight talk phone doesn't record, they don't know that in a second that they pull up to my car and they come over there, I have that on and I inform them that they're being recorded and pretty much it, that scares the shit out of them. It's, they, they already know that we can record. That's, that's another thing that's changed is this, uh, we, I think a lot more locals uh, especially me, you know, I know that uh, we can hold them accountable. And we could say, nope, that's not your right. You're not searching my car. You don't need to know their information. They're my passengers. I'll take your ticket and move the fuck along. And, and you know, that's something I never would have said and before. And I do not need to turn off the camera. There's nothing better than, you know, riding in a... a that's right. I don't, I'm going to keep recording. And uh, riding with my van full of workers who are not really liberty-minded to cross the New Hampshire, Massachusetts, I mean, New Hampshire, Vermont border, and the border patrol is waiting there. And they're like, oh shit, what do we do? I'm like, um, nothing, we're gonna do nothing. And, and that's what we did. We, we stopped for a second and they, they asked their questions and just like the video, I, I just kind of kept rolling through and you know, they, a couple of them stopped. I asked them if I was being detained over and over, just the same way, and then we kept going and, and you know, they're all like, you know, so, yeah, that's what's changed, I think, here for me. And I, I see that other people, too, that, you know, other locals I know, like I have this girl that works for me, knows nothing about Liberty at all. And uh, she knows for a fact that she can start recording and save herself, you know, and you give that to somebody that could help her, you know. So I think that's what's changed with the, you know, the, the uh, accountability. Thank you, Lori. Now, before I forget, Kate, I want to ask you some questions about your new home and how that... Uh, compares to Keene. But before I do, I wanted to add on to what you said, Lori. Um, yeah, when we moved here, we, we moved in. It was me, Will May, uh, Cooper Travis, and Arco Jesse. We moved into this house on Church Street in Keene, and we had a great time. And times were different then. They were, it was more, we, I think we partied a little more, and the activism was kind of weird. Again, I didn't do a whole lot of activism, but there was flag burning and, and so forth and, and, and drinking on the square, which I did do that. But we moved in with a guy who was not part of our movement. He was, a, he was an Obamaite. He was a college student. And I remember one day him going out and he got into some kind of um, uh, encounter with the police. And because of his, his living with us for so long, he got away from them safely 
because he, he told them, he said, I'm a libertarian and I know, know my rights. And they said, forget this guy. We'll just go bother somebody else. And, um, and, and now I started volunteering at, a, at a, um, uh, one of the retirement homes here in town. And his grandfather is there. And his grandfather used to, uh, used to distill moonshine in uh, Arab lands when he worked for uh, Aramco, the oil company. So that's a connection and you know a, a friend that I have here now in Keene and all of us who have moved here have sort of like like you know have put down roots and it's 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 a fascinating development you know everybody's life is a journey and I'll stop right there Kate I've been talking about California and Philadelphia and I think maybe a more scientific comparison would be between two different towns in New Hampshire right so You've been living in Laconia, am I, am I right? Yep, since May. Since May. Mm. May, let's see, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So like about half a year, something like that. And what is, it, uh, what is the Liberty presence in Laconia like, and how is everything there different from Keene? Tell us all. Well, in Laconia, there are some other um, Liberty and mines. Yeah, yeah, and where is Laconia? Laconia is uh, north of uh, Concord, right? It's kind of considered um, sort of sea coasty or lakes region, right? Yeah, it's lakes region. Yeah, that's where the first pork fest I went to was up in the lakes region. Really? At um, I for Gunstock. <laughs> yep, Gunstock. Hmm. Um, so again, I interrupted you. I apologize. Tell us about Laconia. All right. Um, well, Laconia, it does have some liberty-minded people, people who have moved for the Free State Project, like him over there. <coughs> um, it seems like uh, there, there definitely aren't as many as in Keene, and it's a little more spread out, but there are um, monthly meetups, and we just started doing weekly um, hangouts or gatherings. Um, and also, um, a lot of people there, so I moved there for um, a job with Sons of Liberty Mint or the Laconia Free Market. Uh-huh. And Ademo also works there, and I started selling 90% silver on my own. And it seems like a lot of people that come in to buy silver get really on board with the ideas. And there have already been a couple people up there that have started, you know, spreading the ideas themselves that weren't uh, aware of them before. And I mean, it, it's a nice area. I I like it, and. I feel like there are a lot of people that are open to the ideas there. Uh, a lot of people would come into the Laconia free market. It's like a little indoor flea market. We have a bunch of liberty-minded literature out on a table, as well as a bunch of cop block gear. And a lot of people would take it and ask about it, and people just seem curious about the ideas there. Um, okay. I mean, Keene will always be my home, and it'll always be like my favorite part of New Hampshire, but sure. I... Definitely like Laconia, too. All right. Uh, now, before I open um, this panel up for questions, I wanted to ask for advice from, from everybody about any kind of improvements they think that could be made to the, to the activism here in Keene. Um, like Lori, like you were saying before, I'm surprised sometimes when I talk to people and they ask me, and I'm telling them about myself, and they ask me why I moved to New Hampshire, and I tell them I moved for the Free State Project, and they, they have no idea what I'm talking about. That surprises me, but I'm kind of in a bubble, you know. I, I live at the Keene Activist Center. I moved up here for a specific reason. All my friends are libertarians, so I've got a real skewed vision of what Keene is really like. And maybe the, the message isn't getting out um, uh, the best way. So... So I had asked you guys a few days ago whether or not you have any advice. If you do, great, share it with us. If not, of course, keep your peace. Um, I, I just want I'm to looking say, at you, Lori. I know, I see you looking at me. But I want to ask Shauna. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> well, I guess my general advice would be straighten up and fly right. Yeah, Shauna is a very, is a real sort of conservative kind of stick in the mud person. <laughs> <laughs> but I get to enjoy the mud that way. Um, I would say general advice for new movers is don't move here as if you're gonna come in here and 
get your liberty and enjoy yourself and slide on out. Um, because Keene on its own is a great place to live. Um, it, it stands on its own. If there were no, you know, free state project or anything, I'd, you know, and I found myself here, I'd probably be like, well, you know, it's, it's not California. So, um, but in general, um, move here for yourself, you know, research the place. Um, if you can visit when there isn't something exciting going on, um, because that, the, the drudgery of living day to day is what you're going to be dealing with. Not every day's, you know, Liberty Forum Saturday and not every day's Keenvention or anything like that or the, you know, weeks around Pork Fest. Um, and if you do like it, you know, um, save up more money than you think you're going to need because some people, I know Will May, when he moved, he got a job the first week. I took about a week to get a sort of job and then six weeks to get a jobby job. Um, and you need to be able to account for that. You know, nobody here, you know, wants to, nobody who's moving wants to, you know, br rely on other people. Um, and sometimes, you know, the circumstances, some people just cannot get, cannot find a job in time. Um, so yeah, save more money. And again, do it for yourself. If you're, if you move to Keene and you know that there's jobs in Manchester, move to Manchester. Um, don't, or as Kate said, what was that? I couldn't hear don't you. Don't move to Manchester. Why not? I'm thinking about moving. Because when you flush your poop, where does it go? Well, okay. I just want to say, <laughs> well, I this is what it is. At, at, the, at, at the end, you know, I, yeah. when I started and I, I kind of stepped away and was doing my whole work thing, I said, what's their end game? I kept, what's the end game? The end game, well, it's no government, no government or little government as possible. And, and what, how would that affect me? And my family and my kids, if that were to happen tomorrow, I, I would not be doing well. And, and realistically, uh, there's a lot of liberty-minded people, but there's a lot of rednecks out there, too, and other cra people that just don't get it. And when there's no food in the grocery store, shit's going to, you know, that's how I looked at it. And I said, well, I'm going to work as much as I can, get the chunk of land. And I think what, uh, th you do have to get a job, but you can also meet local New Hampshire people do a handshake deal for land, make monthly payments, barter for it. It's how I got my place from another New Hampshire person. Shake, do the handshake deal, make some barter and trade. And then imagine if, you said we're at 15,000 now, is that what you said? I didn't say it, but it's the case. Uh, well, okay, well, uh, if in, in my eyes, a, a, a big number cruncher and non-aggressive way to succeed would be to succeed yourself with a group of people because it takes a village yeah, yeah and and if you came here with no money but there was a place where you could go that had land and then you went down to the local factory and you got yourself some pallets and you built yourself a pallet house you could live there and then you could live off of your land you could cut the trees down for your big house i mean that's realistically that's what we i grew up doing a lot of people you know you we i heat with wood you know i, I have very little I have the internet. I haven't figured out a way to not have that yet. But Lori's got Lori's got um, seemingly boundless energy. She's one of the doers that JJ was talking about yesterday in his um, keynote, fantastic keynote speech. Now, um, I would like to open the panel up for questions now, unless anybody else has something. Anybody else on the panel has something that they want to uh, to say before I do? Yeah. Go ahead, Nemi. Advice: Freaking should not change a thing. Good, good. I um, like it. It's it's moving in a good direction. I I don't think um, I I think the seeds are sown in so far as um, there are people in Keene that um, if Ian Freeman says this guy is green or, or blue, they will pass an ordinance to say it's green. Um, they, there are just some people who will not be won back or could not be won in the first place. And so the ener energy I think is really better better focused not on changing minds that are already closed but on influencing minds that are still open or partially open or are new coming to the area. And that's all I got. Thank you, Nemi. Daryl W. Perry, do you have a question or are you the question master? Uh, I've got a uh, comment and a question. Okay. Lori, you said that people can only find out about the different events if they're online. 
That's uh, well, actually no, no, no. not true. That's what I'm hearing from them. They're like, who are, you know, I, I do know that there's the Shire Forum and a lot of other things, but if you're not on the internet. All of the recurring events across New Hampshire that I am aware of are published on the front page of the FPP News, which is distributed throughout New Hampshire. There's a place in Winchester, uh, Mr. B's or Mr. Mike, something like that. Uh, some gas station that like everybody in Winchester goes to. Uh, they carry the newspaper. About half a dozen places in Keene, places in Match, Lacombe. But we have to bend over and pick that up. I mean, not many people are going to look down and know what P- <laughs> FPP is. We're just in there to get our coffee and our smokes. Do you know what I'm saying? Daryl, is there a website for this newspaper? FPP.cc. Again, fancy TV computer box. I don't know how to work it. You know, yeah, I'm just saying. That, that's why there's the newspaper. Small, and people do pick up and read the paper. But the question is, it seems as though Keen has sort of waves of movers. And a couple of you sort of touched on some of the waves. But are you seeing that there's a difference between the most recent wave of people that got here a little over a year ago and some of the people that got here, say, two or three or four years ago? And if there is a difference, what is the difference? Who are those people that came here about a year ago? Uh, about a year and a half was me, Conan, Marcus. Uh, we all got here about two months of each other. Uh, people before, you know, like year and a half before that. When, uh, when did James get here? He's the most important. Uh, James got here the summer of last year. Okay. So probably five months after I got here. Sure. Go ahead, Nemi. Daryl W. Perry, the, uh, the activists who yes, have moved Nimi. here in the last year are quality activists. And I say that only because you and I are friends. Um, I'm just kidding. Actually, I the, love you too. The, I know. I know. Um, I resent that. <laughs> I love I'm you totally too, teasing. Forgive me. I, I, do, I do enjoy a speck of sarcasm once in a while. Um, there is a, a great difference between each wave. Um, and I think it does depend on the activism that's going on. Um, this most recent wave seems to me to be influenced um, by the, the Robin Hooding. Um, and I think that that, as I said earlier, is uh, really one of the most effective forms, most um, productive forms of activism and, and um, to the most uh, greatest amount of people. Um, prior to that, um, people were kind of just, as Shauna kind of touched on, just kind of moving here because they love the idea of liberty and wanted to just throw everything in their van and come spend a little bit of time and then take the take the breeze back out. Well, would you say that they thought that they could move here and win Sprint to Liberty? Probably. I, I, I Obviously, I'm not sitting on their shoulder and can't read their minds, but that seemed to be the impression that I had, sure. Um, there, of course, are exceptions. I mean, Derek J is fantastic and one of the most awesome activists I know, which seems kind of cliche to me to say. I keep saying that about all these people. I'm surrounded by awesome. I mean, I, and I kind of touched on this in a conversation yesterday um, where... I'm not really an assertive kind of person, but the people I'm, I, I'm surrounded by are ambush interviewers and people who are not afraid to be assertive and challenge people. And so I've kind of taken on the challenge myself to whatever problem I have being an assertive person with a camera, I'm surrounded by awesome people who can help me out. And so I'm taking the challenge myself to go out and kind of challenge my my, my weaknesses, my insecurities, and kind of go out and, and um, take advantage of the awesome that I'm surrounded by. I can really only echo Nemi's sentiment that there needs to be the, the last wave or the last um, bucket of people from the last year or so have been really great and kind of along the same lines of the stick in the mud, stick in the mud that I'm such a fan of, um, definitely more Conans, more Marcuses, more Jameses, a couple more Daryls. Um, <laughs> there are no more Daryls. <laughs> and there's only one FPP.cc. Um, and, and there's still going to be, you know, um, people sliding in for a bit to, um, you know, it, have a learning experience about reality or something. Um, and that's fine as long as there's more steady, stable, you know, long-term settler type people moving in to, ab- to be able to absorb that. That's all I got. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you very much. 
And just to add that I think that Derek is doing a lot more for Liberty now that he's putting out daily newscast and a twice weekly radio show than he was getting arrested. Thank you, Daryl. Daryl, what are the addresses for those podcasts? Don't sit down. Come back to the mic. No. Give, give Derek some free free press because he is. You're right. I agree thoroughly that Derek is much more productive in his present capacity than he ever would be in a jail cell. But go ahead. PeaceNewsNow.com, and that is available on the iHeart Radio app, along with Peace Love Liberty Radio, Free Talk Live, and the Angel Clark Show. Yes, sir. I have an anecdote followed by a question. Now, uh, we haven't met, have we? I don't think so. Okay, great. Um, um, can, you, uh, can you tell me your name? And My name is Matt. All right. Um, okay, go ahead with your question or comment, Matt. So, yeah, the anecdote. Uh, last night, uh, I was at karaoke. Uh, I've never done karaoke, and I didn't do it last night, but I was there just to hang out. And uh, there were several tables... Uh, placed next to each other in the middle of the room and uh, a lot of the folks here were sitting there and I was uh, at a table off to the side just chatting with a few people and uh, there's a group of eight women that came in seven or eight women and uh, it was the 40th birthday of one of them and uh, her younger sister you know, just comes up and starts like I think flirting with me and so basically we were talking for a few minutes and she was asking uh, you know, uh, what are all the people that I'm with? What, what are they all about? And I was explaining the Free State Project to her, and uh, she hadn't heard of it at all. And right. she said she was a local person. She's a mother of three. And uh, so, um, and I think Nemi knows what I'm talking about because she was looking right at me or, or at the TV right above me, but I, I don't know if she was lip reading or if she could hear what I was saying, but it seems like she was, uh, I don't know if she was just mildly amused or something about just me trying to explain the Free State Project, but I got the sense that she could kind of, she kind of knew what, you know, was going on and so forth. But, um, so my question is, uh, after explaining the gist of the Free State Project, how is it that um, local women uh, didn't put uh, the two and two together that these are the same people that are doing these high profile things like Robin Hooding, uh, the cop blocking, uh, the large gatherings, uh, downtown and so forth. I would think that if uh, she said that she had lived here her whole life and uh, so she has roots here. I'm wondering uh, how is it that locals aren't connecting the two? I'm fairly certain she was playing dumb. Um, I'm fairly certain she was. I, I think it, if you live in Keene, you, you can't really escape free Keene. Um, you can't escape Robin Hood uh, unless you're not tuned in at all. Uh, if you're under a rock, living in a tent somewhere, that's... Um, but even then, do they, you probably hear uh, C. Garrett out with his big hair, plug-in meters, or... I'm, I'm certain if someone has spent their whole life here, they're well aware of Free Keen, so I don't think she was being forthright with you. It's, it's not that she thought they were just uh, radical college students. Uh, that a lot of the people here might think that the activism is just college students and it's not part of this larger thing. That hasn't been my experience. My experience with the locals has been that they know that this is separate from any sort of college shenanigans or hijinks. Um, this is not really a fraternity, even though, um, you know, we don't, we have had some great parties here in Keene, don't get me wrong, but it's not of the weekly, let's have people falling off the second floor balcony kind of thing that Keene is kind of famous for. Um, but my, my experience is not that, um, that the keen keen can't key free keen can't really go unnoticed here it's just the way it is unless what you know like i was i was on the hamster wheel i don't want to say necessarily i was a sheep i probably was but uh i worked 90 hours a week i came you know i came home i ate i went to sleep i went 90 you know back to work back you know and uh i the only reason why i even heard about that 420 rally is because i had a couple days off and i'm not saying that's the same way for everybody but uh if you're immersed with, you know, work, Facebook, so, you know, everything else like that, it's very easy to not see what the heck is going on there. And uh, I, I, I think that people firmly believe here that Keen, that the Keen Free Staters are, have nothing to do with the college kids. I think that they know that they're their own entity and are here for freedom. They just don't know what that means. Thank you for sharing that, Matt. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is, is sort of about demographics. Can anyone give me a sense for the proportion of free staters, 
uh, free keens and non-free keens. In other words, if you're pulled over by a policeman and you say, I'm a free stater, is he going to you know, lock you up immediately or is he going to go, whoa, okay, versus you know, meeting someone uh, just on the streets and they ask you, you know, what are you doing here? And you just say, I'm a free stater. What's the general reaction you're going to get from the population? Um, in Keene, they have a notation in the database when you are arrested for gang affiliation and there is a free state non-violent category. Really? Um, and I took great issue with that because I'm a native, so I can't be a free stater. Why am I in the free stater gang? So I'm actually a known associate of the free state project. Um, so what is, what is the reaction when I'm pulled over by a police officer? Um, I guess I get three more cops and two more cruisers um, because they probably know I'm going to send out a text or make a phone call to Pork 411, which is a service that'll send a voicemail to 2,000 people as soon as the voicemail is concluded. Um, we have walkie-talkies in Keene. Uh, we have a good cell phone service, cell phone circle in Keene. Uh, so that may well be why I got such high attention for my California stop. Um, when I, the reaction seems to be mixed when I talk to um, people and it doesn't seem dependent on age or sex necessarily, gender, excuse me. Um, you know, it, it really depends on, the, the dependent factor I see is how much government has intruded upon the person's life. If it's someone who has gotten nothing but good from the government, um, or very, very few negative interactions, uh, they're generally like, well, what's this all about? So what, what, what's even the point? You know, isn't government great? Um, but if someone's really been kind of screwed over or government is starting to further step into their life when, they're when they haven't done anything wrong, they seem much more receptive to, so what is this? And what are you guys doing? Hey, that's really cool. You mean your friend left a couch on his front lawn and just kind of stuck it to the city? wait a minute, they came after him to take his license away? This is all ridiculous. This is BS, so tell me more about what you do. And that's where it's, um, I think it's really the people who have been personally affected by it who respond the best. That's, um, I think um, you raise a question that a lot of people have. I certainly do. What is it going to do to your interaction with the police? How is it going to affect your interaction with the police when they know who you are and what you're about? And... <clears throat> The, the debate, the, I guess the arguments for either side is, number one, the first thing that I think is that it's just going to be worse for you, the, the, the potential, the mundane, the citizen, the non-police officer. It's going to be worse for you because you're demonstrating to them that you're on the opposite side and that you're their enemy or some, some such thing. But in fact, I think this is, um, this is not the case. I think that the police and the free staters are kindred spirits in an important way that neither one of us is going to tolerate being pushed around and told what to do and being forced to live life a certain way. I think the police, the potential police officer looks at the world and he sees the great masses being kicked around and he says, well, I don't want that for me. And there's only one way that I see that I can get a different life. And that's to, you know, be the guy kicking the rest of them around. But I'm a good person and I'm not going to do that or something like that. So, so I think because of that, that the interactions that I have when I get pulled over, I think they're much, they're much, they're much better for me. When I, I was pulled over by a state trooper and he didn't like me. And it, it was obvious, he made it plain, um, but I didn't get a ticket. The practical effect of them stopping us is that it's just going to be, we're just like everybody else getting a ticket, but it's going to be harder for them, and they're going to like it a lot less, the whole process. So personally, I think that it's much better that your interaction with the police is going to be better if they know that you care about your own sovereignty and your own personal sovereignty. Does anybody else have anything to add to that? Uh, the same goes with the school system. Elaborate. Uh, the school, you know, I got. Oh, hide. like when you're talking to school administrators. Yeah, if, you're, if you do have kids, you know, you, I don't. And it was didn't want, when I, my kids went to school for a little while, uh, and because they wanted to, I couldn't be like, "You're staying home." Uh, so in that time, you you're you know fighting with them all the time, and you know, I could literally say, you know, did you ever see what's going on at Keene High School? 
and like all those free staters that are standing outside with their camera handing out literature to that school. You ever think about that? I said, did you ever think about why they're not in Winchester? He's like, no, I, I don't know. I'm like, they don't know there's a school in Winchester. That's what it is. That's the only reason why. You know, you could just as easily be filmed right now and, you know, uh, discriminating against my children or others is going to certainly get you on YouTube, but I don't think that you guys can handle that. And, you know, they quickly change their... It works good for the school, too. Also, about the database you said uh, that the police keep, uh, that, that's factual, right? Yes. That, uh, in New Orleans, they had this thing that they called clipping, uh, where police officers, when they would stop someone, if they had any negative interaction with them, they would take a nail clipper and just clip one little corner off of their uh, driver's license. So in the future, if they ever got stopped by another police officer, they would just you know, feel around the edge of the driver's license, and if it was clipped, they know this person had a negative reaction with the cop before, and now the cops were going to treat you a little bit more harshly because you, know, you obviously messed with one of theirs. Uh, and later on, it was found to be illegal for them to do that. Um, it seems to me that the, the whole database thing would, would be illegal as well. Uh, just to select a subset of people just because you associate yourselves with the uh, free state it's movement. A, it's right? a gang affiliation. It's a gang affiliation. Wow. Okay, thanks. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. That's all that I have for you. I, um, I, I want to thank everybody uh, again for coming to our panel. I enjoyed it uh, thoroughly. And um, thank Nemi, Shauna, Kate, Lori. Thank you very much for coming. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.